Welcome to Pop Turnative, where we dive into topical discussions from the worlds of pop culture, social media, and sports. Here is your host, Peter Romoliotis, aka PD Beats. PD Beats here from Pop Turnative, speaking to Martin Sensmeyer about the last manhunt coming to theaters November 18th. Welcome to the show. Thank you so much for your time, man. Thanks for having me. I mean, it's interesting because the Western genre has always been around. The The body of work is endless, I feel like, when I was growing up and as well. But I feel like there's been a boom in interest and appetite and popularity. What is it like working on a film in the Western genre, knowing that there is this big kind of boom in appetite? Martin, I'm curious about that. Yeah. <laughs> my favorite genre to work in um yep. I, you know i kind of broke out in on a western in west world and magnificent seven were my first two yep. projects pretty much um so and i've had a opportunity to work on a few other westerns mm -hmm. um 1883 um uh, chickasaw rancher Montford, yep. um uh, last manhunt you know um, it's, it's really amazing it, to see the boom and to see, to, to get an opportunity to work on these films. Um, you go from Western to Western and, and in between other projects. And I run into a lot of the same guys, stunt guys, cowboys, um, and, and you get to know these people and, and really amazing, amazing folks. And, and to see their ability is, is just blows my mind <laughs> really. So it's, it's been an awesome, awesome ride, man. You look at this film, it's packed in terms of, you know, the cast you got to work with is is fantastic. The storyline is, in a lot of ways, this film has kind of the slow burn moments. The film has the kind of fast-paced moments as well, dynamic characters. What kind of Western, like we talked about, what stands out in the script for you specifically when you read, like, when this kind of project comes comes to you specifically? Getting to tell it from a native perspective, yep, and 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 to be the leading man in it because westerns, you know, for so long are always told from the perspective of the non-native and the native involvement. You know, they're always uh, every scene is necessary to 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 encapsulate the character, the motivation of the character. Meaning, like we're always coming over the hill or always coming towards the the the. Uh, protagonist right yep. and 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 so there's always two-dimensional characters even and and you see that it in there's not a lot of dialogue um there's not a lot of uh um opportunity for to, to see the character as they are but more so uh just supporting the other characters or they're told from the other characters perspective right yeah. So, so this, so this is a fresh perspective on, on, and getting to see this character in his own element and, and how he moves when he's not a part of somebody else's scene and when he's not even saying anything. Yeah. Really. Yeah. It's funny, you've noticed, like, I don't, when I do interviews, especially with this movie, Martin, I mean, I've this one's really good when you're going fresh. So, like, I try not my best not to, like, ask about certain kind of scenes and stuff because it's like, and you've, do, you've done so many interviews and everything. Do you sometimes have a hard time kind of, like, does it feel like sometimes, like, when you do interviews for projects, it's, like, always walking on eggshells because, like, depending on the question, there might be something that might be a spoiler. Like, I'm sure you get used to it after doing them over time, right? <laughs> yeah, you kind of get used to it, I think. <laughs> I'm pretty good at about not giving spoilers. When I started out, I was, you know, I'll tell you a funny story. Oh, yeah. Uh, when, when, when I did press for The Magnificent Seven, um, uh, <laughs> we were doing Good Morning America, and I'm sitting up there with Denzel Washington, Ethan Hawke, Chris Pratt, and The Magnificent Seven. And, and, uh, we start, they start asking us questions and here I go. And I'm saying, oh man, this one part in the movie where I get this, you know, like, I, and, and then it's like, hey, come on, come on, man. Come on. Come Someone's on, man. on the other side. Like, <laughs> and I'm like, hey, and, hey. And he's, like, <laughs> he's like, he's like, Antoine Fuqua. I was like, can't give any spoilers, man. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, my bad, my bad. Take it back. 
Yeah, you so. mentioned at the top that you have had the opportunity to be part so far of the Taylor Sheridan universe with Yellowstone and mm -hmm. 1883. And I'm just curious because that just seems to be a universe that is continuing to grow and it's like nonstop. I'm just curious what it's like kind of being part of that universe as well, knowing that like the Western component that like we talked about is very popular, but just the, the characters and the backstories of these characters are just phenomenal. What's it like being part of that universe specifically? Um, it's, uh, I can't even put it in words, you know, I'm, uh, Taylor Sheridan really was one of the first people to give me a shot as well. Uh, you know, and, and, uh, <clears throat> and to be a part of his first movie that he directed, um, you know, it, getting a chance to work with him and then watch his progression uh, and be a part of that. Uh, it's the opportunity of a lifetime and, yep. and, and uh, to even sit down and talk with him and hear his uh, thoughts on, you know, everything regarding film and, and just to, to be a part of what he's trying to do mm -hmm. uh, to give accurate storytelling, better representation um, and his love and care for native culture and, and yeah. native st stories. Uh, it's, it's awesome, man. Uh, like, you know, he's, he's just a, such a, uh, awesome person to be around. It was really, it, like, he's, I've, it's I've, kinda like, he's like a real life superhero in a lot of ways. Cause I've man. spoken to Gil <laughs> and I've spoken, I've spoken to Gil and Mo yeah. about that as well. And they said the, they said very similar things, which is awesome too. Yeah. I mean, the guy, you know, like there's people have, uh, People that don't know him, uh, you know, they, they, I don't know what they think, really. Yeah. <laughs> but I know that people that know him think highly of the guy because he's, you know, he's, he takes care of a lot of people. He provides a lot of jobs. Yeah. And, and I think that speaks for itself and the stories that he creates, everybody likes. So, yeah. uh, you know, like, that's, it's just been awesome to be a part of that. And it's helped my career a lot. Um, so yeah, when I get a call from Taylor, you mm -hmm. know, um, it's a yes for sure, because he's been there since the beginning. And, and, and so, yeah. uh, you know, I would hope that I get to work with him on more stuff in the future. And you brought up, you know, representation and I feel like kind of to add to what you talked about, I feel like one of the best things about being a storyteller these days, this is more of kind of like a statement mm -hmm. or opinion that you could like comment on rather than a question, but I feel like. You were going to agree with me where, like, stories that weren't told before are finally getting told, Martin. Yeah, yeah. That's 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 true. I mean, you've yeah. got guys like, uh, you know, the uh, Sterling Harjo's of the world and, and, and the Sierra Ornales and people like that. Uh, uh, there's so many that I can't, you know, like, the one. there's a lot of Canadian uh, directors. Uh, uh, and they're, they're uh, Sydney Freeland from, you know, she's she's uh, Navajo. Uh, yep. They're, they're amazing. And just to watch them and to even have the opportunity to work with them on some things, it's, it's, that's another, that's a whole nother thing because like, yeah, they're, they're telling uh, stories from our perspective and, and uh, really uh, trailblazing and making a big, big boom mm -hmm. and creating so much opportunity. Um, man, it's mind blowing. It's, it's cool. Cause I started out when I started out, it was just actors. You know? Yeah. And, and, uh, so, like, that's where it really started with the actors, and then it moved into you know we need we need better storytelling, we need better representation, and we started having writers that got opportunities, and the next thing you know, they're showrunners and directors, and it's just a beautiful thing to see. And actors are directing and showrunning yeah. and doing all these things, and it's just I know. <laughs> it's crazy. It's so it's oh, cool. it's like. You go on IMDb, and, and, and what? And, yeah. but, but we're but we're seeing that it works. We're seeing that yeah. people like it, and we're seeing that it can be successful and it could be a big hit. You know, it's, it's like, oh man, that's yeah. We we've, we've known that for a long time that we can you know we can tell our own stories. We can we can get up there and 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 tell it in an entertaining way and, and make it truthful and and find something that uh, can resonate with people. Because really, when it comes down to it, it's about human beings. It's about the humanity of the nature of people, and I think that's something that no matter where you're from or what your background is, you're going to identify with the challenges that we face yeah. in our world. Totally. You can answer this question in regards to The Last Manhunt or just in general, because I feel like you have worked on a lot of different projects in terms of the characters and in terms of 
Some are period pieces, some are more present time and everything. Is it all storytelling for you or, the, or does the mindset change a little bit depending on the project? Because I feel like it all is storytelling at the end of the day. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. Most yeah. of, you know, like you get a few, you get some money jobs here and there that yeah. <laughs> where you're, you're not, you're not going to scrutinize the story too bad, you know, like you're like, okay, this is what it is, you know. Um, but when you get these, indie films like this you get the chance to work with the writer and the director and and get to talk about the character and where mm. you know if the character needs to go in a different direction uh than what the script says then you figure that out you know on day 14 or you know like whatever yeah and, and so you kind of adapt and and work with the writer and work with the director and we've had you know like christian was great to work with christian yep. camargo and and jason he was awesome um the guy's just like a brilliant mind like jason you know like he's he's you, you see him and he's this gigantic movie star and stuff and you see you see like how he uh how other people you know we see him everywhere right and you see him do all these crazy things but like when you sit down and talk to the guy like he's really really like a poetic mind it's just he's he's and he's crazy smart so yeah uh, you know it was it was cool getting to work with him and, and seeing the care that he took to work with mm -hmm. the tribe and how much he got them involved and um you know it was just awesome it's awesome funny you mentioned movie. like the movie being like an independent film like an indie film i always thought found that so weird and odd in my opinion the term like indie film indie music indie rock because it's like independent do it diy right like, do it yourself you know like has that kind of i think stigma of being small you know what i mean and everything but like some of yeah. the biggest movies out there are indie movies some of the biggest like tame and paula right. vampire weekend these are indie rock bands these bands are playing stadiums you know what i mean you know what yeah. i mean by that a little bit yeah, it's yeah, a bit yeah, yeah. weird yeah. right <laughs> well this one was this one was no big film it was small yeah. very no, small. no no for sure small, small crew uh, small cast. Uh, we, we, you know, we were battling the elements. It, we didn't have a large budget. But we I'm also talking there. about popularity too, right? Like these, yeah, real, these are yeah. small movies that become like massive afterwards, right? Too. <laughs> well, we have yet to see. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> I think you know, like Jason, he's you know, he's 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 like I said, he's he's a, a great storyteller, and he just mm -hmm. so to, to to be opportunity to be a part of it, it was yeah, no no brainer. Yeah, yeah, but in terms of, yeah, can we give a shout out to the crew? Shout out to the crew, right? We got to shout out the, the crew, crew. Yeah, yeah, the crew was amazing. I yeah. uh, like, <laughs> like I said, yeah, like I said, it was a small crew, but they were after it. They, they set up these shots. We were working, you know, through dust storms, rainstorms, lightning. Uh, there was fires. It was crazy. Like, we got, like, we, the, the amount of time that we had to shoot this movie was then wasn't enough. But then it was cut down even more because we lost days because of the weather. So yeah. we, we made it work. We adjusted, adapted, and, and uh, there's a lot of pressure on us to, to get it done. But, uh, yeah, we got it done. <laughs> the Last Manhunt's going to be in theaters November 18th, so they're going to got to check it out. Martin, thank you so much for coming on Pop Turner. It was so great chatting Thanks. with you, man. Thanks for having me, man. Pop. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, it's been Pop Turn of YouTube.com slash Pop Turn previous episodes. Until next time, this is Martin Sensmeyer and PD Beats signing off. Thank you for tuning in to Pop Turnative. Make sure to check out our past episodes of Pop Turnative on YouTube. Be sure to like Pop Turnative on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. This has been an Autograph Communications production.